So essentially, the problem that a lot of us have in fashion, which is an extremely competitive business, as I'm sure most of you all are in the industry, and you would know it's really hard to stand out and come up with ideas and be consistent in terms of our style, etc. So you're not alone. Everybody that's in fashion has the same problem. How are we going to make the right product, introduce it at the right time, distribute it at the right channels, and luckily the internet is here, so social media gives us a really inexpensive channel to not only target our consumers, but also help us in terms of distribution and also capture the attention of the right consumers. And these are problems that we all face, and we're going to try and see how best we could tackle these problems today. So forecasting essentially is giving us a schedule or strategy through which we can plan our merchandise. Now the thing is, one of the main problems is that we're not working with two seasons anymore, that spring, summer, autumn, winter season. Y'all will be working according to your customer. So if you're going to cater for carnival, for summer, for Easter, for Christmas, etc., everything needs to be scheduled and you need to plan in advance. So we're going to look at that. So essentially, the people that come up with a fashion forecast, they are called trend chasers. And as designers and entrepreneurs, anybody in the industry, y'all are expected to be the same, meaning y'all are expected to be able to understand where fashion is coming from. Traditionally, we know that would be the fashion capitals, but there's tons of hotspots that come up, cultural hotspots. Closest one to us might be Jamaica. Jamaica is having major impact on fashion right now. You know, just because of the style, the versatility of the culture, the music, and how firmly they support their own culture. So the forecast allows for a continuous flow of innovation that's required to keep the business going. The last thing you want to be in fashion is stagnant. You're boring. Consumers expect to come to your store and see something new every single time they go. So we need to keep them uh, excited, uh, motivated to come in. So except what the forecast does, like I mentioned, is giving you strategic windows, letting you anticipate, okay, carnival is coming up from the shows. We can see leather, bling, bling stuff, a little zhuzh is um, very in the rage right now. So we will basically adapt, and that's really up to your personal preference. Everybody does need to be the same in fashion. It's really how you interpret it, and you're able to lend your own cool onto it and get the consumer to purchase. So what the forecast also aims to do is to predict the mood, behavior, and buying habits. So women, for example, we're not going to spend $100 on a pair of socks. Let's just be real, right? We'll probably spend $100 easily on a pair of shades, on a host of other fashion items, but not socks. Socks, they don't really do anything for our image. So in terms of understanding the band behavior of young females towards socks, as a designer, if I was making socks, I'm not going to make socks that cost $500 a pair because my consumers don't want that. So we need to understand what consumers are willing to pay. So why do fashion change? We need to be aware of this too because we constantly are looking at our consumers. People get bored very, very quickly right now. Um, Instagram, the internet, all these social media sites, they're really accelerating the rate at which we could get information. So we need to look at the population, make sure that the makeup of it is going to work for us so we can establish ourselves in the right area. Need to look at personal characteristics. Um, and when we get to branding, we'll talk about that a little bit more in terms of um, at making attributes of your brand and attaching it to the consumers. And we always want to keep our eye on the competitors. No matter how distinguished or distinct your brand is, eventually somebody else is going to come and try and outdo you. It sucks. But that keeps you on your toes, though. So your trend analysis, essentially, which is what you all would need to do as well, is your fashion and your consumer scan put together. It will analyze shifts in consumer lifestyles. We are getting bigger and smaller at the same time. Back in the day, something like a triple XL did not exist. But now we have three and it's going up. Not only that, a zero didn't exist either. And now we have double zeros. I see extra, extra, extra small, you know, and we keep going down. So we're simultaneously growing and shrinking, which, which is awesome. And it gives um, 
designers a little bit of trouble because we do see a lot of um, gaps in the market in terms of people catering for plus size and for really petite people. So we need to stay close to pop culture. It's usually tended to be very, tends to be, sorry, um, very frivolous, which is why a lot of people don't take it seriously. Um, and pop culture is basically anything that's not high culture, which are like the Shakespeare's and fine art, fine literature, etc. The other thing about fashion we need to note is that it's change. And while we can have certain products that we repeat season after season, for the most part, we always need to introduce new stuff. Converse is one of those people that have gotten away with selling pretty much exactly the same product for decades now. Um, and that's because they've managed to build a really compelling brand identity around their product. Fashion is also a social and psychological response. Human beings are confusing by nature. We do not know what we want. We actually want to be differentiated and unique, but we don't want to stand out too much. You know, so it's kind of this ambivalence that we need to deal with that kind of drives us nuts. We are constantly manipulating our public image to fit the expectations. So, you know, I'm sure a lot of you would have liked to come here in your pajamas, not brush your teeth, and just kind of, I know I didn't want to put on makeup right now this morning, but I did, because that's what ex is expected of me, and if I didn't, I actually would feel a little bit, I don't know, insecure maybe? So it is a psychological response, and we need to know um, in everything that we design, there should be a cognitive and an emotional experience. Cognitive in the sense that, I feel good when I purchase this product. The price and the quality and the wearability, it matches up and I feel good. I know I can get great use out of this product. So rationally, this product or this purchase makes sense. The emotional experience is the excitement of when you wear that new product for the first time and your posture straightens a little bit and you feel a lot better about yourself in public. Um, not only that, going into the store itself should be a really nice experience, helpful, um, which is why the luxury brands, you know, we go into one of these luxury brands, you can get champagne, the seats are comfortable and padded, and like mass market brands where it's usually wooden. They don't want you sitting too long, like get it, get out, kind of thing. So the emotional experience is extremely important. Fashion is also a transfer of meaning, like I said, depending on how we wear our clothes. It says, I am a business person, or it says, I'm really chilled and relaxed, or I might have something really fun on, and it says, I'm approachable, come talk to me. So we need to know what we want our clothes to say, right? Does it say I'm really feminine, etc.? Fashion is also an economic stimulus. The other thing is, fashion is not meant to be in style. Marketers overexpose products so that they go out of style. And that's the fastest way to send something out of style once it's overexposed. And it works with people too. There are loads of people, we see them too much and we just can't handle them anymore. Like the Kim K's and, well, Paris Hilton, you all might know, know one too much, but she was pretty annoying as well. So overexposure is never good. And it's also what makes fashion go out of style. Some things are planned. So like we see in terms of the Yeezys and the Jordans, every year there'll be a new one. So we can expect that um, coming out of the market. Um, and my iPhone, which will definitely still be functional by the time the 8 comes out, but because I don't have it, I, I want it. So there's this drive for new. That's the other part of planned obsolescence. They introduce new products to make your old products obsolete. <laughs>